everyone, and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0.23, where I think in this episode we should endeavor to get a Kerbal into polar orbit. Now, I I don't think I, I don't remember if we've actually gotten a human into polar orbit before. Uh, uh, if somebody knows about that, please mention it in the in the comments below. But uh, but yeah, I, uh, I think we definitely have enough Delta V. How much do we have on this thing? We have a thousand, uh, 11,100, which actually that's pretty close. Uh, basically, we're talking about adding in the, the velocity of the rotation of the planet into the usual 9,500. At least I think that's what you're supposed to do. I've never been particularly good about estimating how much I need for polar orbit, as you could probably tell. Let me dump the scientific instruments. First thing I want to do is uh, upgrade this. Remember, in the at the end of the previous episode, we bought a lot of SRB stuff, and I wanted to add a launch escape system. So let me remove these instruments for now. Uh, we've also got uh, the other SRBs. I, I love. I've always loved these. Um, Though I'll have to, uh, uh, one one interesting thing is that we do get to do thrust limiter, and I don't know if we get to change the time that they burn for. But anyway, uh, well, actually they're, they're related. But anyway, so we've got those. But for this case, we need small small ones, and we need ones that would work in the atmosphere, right? So we've got these vacuum SRBs, but. Uh, when top a launch escape system, we need good thrust in the atmosphere, just in case. So we're just going to use these stretchable SRBs here. And obviously right now they're too big, but they are stretchable. So I'm going to reduce it to 0.125, just to get a round number, uh, eighth of a meter. Sounds like a good number to go with. And I'm going to go for five units of solid fuel. like so. But now, right now, you can see the burn time is 60 seconds and the thrust is 0.34 kilonewtons. 0.34 kilonewtons is not going to be good enough for a launch escape system. So we need to change the burn time and if you can see on the stretchy tanks we can change burn time by pressing G. We can also change the textures by pressing, pressing T but I don't think we need to change the textures. Uh, I just want to reduce the burn time and remember uh, if you hold shift you can go down by a lot at a time so I don't have to do a lot of dragging but now we're close enough so that I just don't there we go so now we've got 20 kilonewtons but we've only got one on one side so actually let's see now uh, let's say we decouple this so this would be the pod and just one would give us a thrust to weight ratio of uh, 1.4. We need to be able to overcome the maximum thrust to weight ratio that is likely to occur with this. Now, oh, the antenna. Hmm. Okay, uh, let's move the antenna. If it'll let me grab it. Yes. Okay. Uh, that's probably not the best place. Oh, no, not the whole pod. Just, just the antenna. There we go. Put it back here. Right. Okay, so um, 2.6 is not bad, but at, at its most, this rocket is going to have a thrust weight ratio of 6, a little over 6. So we need more than that in order to pull ourselves away at that point. Obviously, this would already be quite a lot if we had to do an abort on the launch pad for some reason. Uh, but uh, yeah, so. Let's get symmetry back and alt. Gotta use alt, otherwise you're going to lose the right sizing for the thing. Now, I could use the launch escape tower, but really in this case, that wouldn't be good. There's an, numerous reasons. First of all, of course, it'd be extra mass. But second of all, these these little SRBs could be multi multi-purpose. They wouldn't only be a launch escape system. They could also be um, help us uh, return from orbit. 
but more importantly to my mind, they can uh, satisfy the Ullage requirement uh, if we need to relight the upper stage. And that is going to become important for moon missions. So we could keep this whole pod system intact, and then in later, later missions, uh, the, this stage that we have up here right now will become a third stage instead of a second stage. And when it becomes a third stage, we can relight it in order to either make a moon transit or uh, return from the moon, uh, do the burn to return from the moon. So that, that's part of the, my plan. So these will help uh, settle the fuel down, make sure that the fuel flow is stable for those uh, relights. Okay, um, now you, uh, j just to be clear, well, obviously it's not technically a good idea to have them like this because they would scorch the side of the pod, but, but in this case we don't have any any real good solution. The best thing would be to have them recessed into the pod itself. They should be built into the pod and wouldn't be sticking out like this at all. Um, yeah, uh, and of course uh, the reason why they have to be high up is because I don't want them to... Uh, they don't have to be this high up though. Uh, they could be a little bit lower and I guess that would look better. Uh, it's not strictly necessary though, is it? It would look better and really the thing is I don't want to cross this line. I, I want the RCS to have a clear field, but I guess, I guess we could move it a little bit lower. That looks fine. Now I need to do some action grouping. Obviously we don't want them to be operating at all unless we really really want them to. First thing, abort system. First thing we want to do is decouple and then we'll want to fire all of these. Activate, activate, activate. They gotta give quite an oomph as you can see uh, between 7.5 and 8.6 uh, geez, but you know, if we're do <laughs> if we're going to uh, have it be a launch escape system, I hope the pilot would expect that uh, he'll get a jolt. So that's fair enough. And uh, yep, that's the abort system. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to action group the pairs in uh, at the bottom end of these. So I'm going to say activate that pair, and in this case, activate this pair. And in this case, activate this pair. And this is for uh, all our other purposes like uh, deorbiting or settling the fuel down. Okay, let me make sure that uh, this antenna... Uh, no, no. Just the antenna. Is that, uh, actually, let's toggle it. Move that. Okay, I think that's the best of the situation spoken for. All right, and it didn't really uh, reduce our Delta V at all. These are all fully loaded and ready to go with lots and lots of thrust to pull us away from the vehicle if some disaster should occur. Indeed. So this will be, uh, oh, I'll still call it the Asimov. I mean, really, this is what it should have been like. Oh, uh, scientific instruments, mustn't forget that. So, let's have some... Uh, I must remember to, when I do the re-entry, this should be the bottom end. This should be the end that I empty the RCS tanks. Uh, no, 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 no. I don't want the... Oh, that's wrong. I don't want the... Um, patch to be facing down, really, do I? I guess it really wouldn't matter. It will be shielded from the heat anyway. Yeah, okay, so it'd be this side, the hatch side, that I want to empty the tanks on. Because this side, because I'm putting the scientific instruments here, this side will have... Uh, oh, it's tough. Uh, uh, if these produce drag, that's another thing. Uh, let's get that. There. And even though the thermometers are hardly useful at all. Just for the sake of... Making sure we have them. Okay. Right, so that's going to be our advanced version. With launch escape system. 
And now we are going to populate our pod. We are not going to have Jeb. This time it's uh, not Jeb. <laughs> it's Bill. And Bill is going polar. Alright, so uh, without further ado, see you on the launch pad. Okay, so here we are. And uh, I really don't like it that the countdown clock starts even though I haven't actually uh, set off yet. But uh, I'm not going to use launch control this time because it was uh, having that delay because of the lag. Anyway, so uh, yeah, I don't know. Should I do the whole launch countdown thing? Let's let's just uh, let's just do a very short countdown for Bill. So throttle up and T minus five, four, three, two, one, and. Off we go. With future rockets, I'll have to uh, ignite the rocket and then release the launch clamps. I think that will be better. I mean, of course, that's what they always do, but I haven't been doing that. We certainly have the margin for it. Okay, up we go, Bill. We need to hire some Kerbals to do the launch abort test, I think. Uh, I, I don't want to risk any of the main three, but uh, I think a launch abort test would be very interesting to watch. But I want to hire uh, uh, a test pilot specifically for that. Could be the next Neil Armstrong, you never know, but... So, I don't know if any uh, any astronaut or cosmonaut has been put into polar orbit, and I'm sure if anybody does know, uh, I'll get that information. I can't imagine why they'd be put into polar orbit, uh, except for the novelty sake of it, but yeah, I mean, there's no good reason for that, I guess. certainly makes uh, recovering them a little bit harder. I mean, uh, making sure that they land in the right spot. I mean, obviously you can bring them down, but... Actually... Thinking about it, I should be going horizontal quicker than normal to get as much velocity, horizontal velocity out of this stage as I can. Don't like the roll on this thing. So after this, I think there are a few things we can do. First of all, uh, we can try and get a Kerbal into a high Kerbin orbit, but that's a little bit risky. Uh, oh, this is very risky, what I'm doing right now. No, 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 come on. Uh, yeah, th that's a little bit risky. The other thing we can do is try and send a probe to the moon with this rocket. After that, I think we need to design a new rocket, a new launcher. Bill is not happy. Apparently not quite stupid enough for this, and he knows I'm a little bit out of it, so uh, based on the fact that I over-rotated. Hmm. Oh, he's happy now. Okay, I guess we can continue rotating. got a roll here. I guess that's because of the fact, well, I mean, it shouldn't be uh, creating that much. I mean, the scientific instruments didn't do this uh, last time with uh, Jeb, so, and that's really the only current differential mass involved here.
What, what can we do? A little bit of a rotation isn't the worst thing. Okay, we can go to 30 here. Approaching uh, max G here. Somebody really needs to do the animations for the squished face, you know, high G force situation on the Kerbals. That that needs to happen. I mean, come on. You've got a G force meter. You're gonna have to uh, show us G force effects. Okay, and uh, we're on our second stage. So this is going to be a long burn, of course, and I'll probably uh, catch you closer to our apoapsis. Okay, what's becoming abundantly apparent is that even though I might have the Delta V to get into a polar orbit, I might not have the time to get into polar orbit. Uh, in other words, the time to expend the stage, or at least burn enough of it to get the velocity I need. Really, I need a surface velocity of uh, 7,800. If you remember, uh, going into an equatorial orbit, uh, we needed about 7,300 surface. But in this case, there's not much difference between the surface velocity and the orbital velocity because, well, we're not getting the benefit of the rotation of the planet. So, really, we need to get all 7,800 meters per second. And we need to do that in time. Now, I notice, oh, good, 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 good. Our time to apoapsis is now increasing, so we're, we're good now. All right. Uh, and, you know, our apoapsis is still well under the 300 kilometer range that I usually set as my target for this kind of thing. So, so I'm uh, still going for 300 uh, kilometers, though I don't think we'll get up to that. I don't think we need to increase our time to apoapsis, so I'm going to uh, go a little bit below 30 degrees now on our, uh, on our angle of attack or our pitch. In this case, it's pretty close to the same thing. Okay, that'll do. 338 by 251. That's fine, and we had 550 meters per, spec per second to spare in this stage, which is good. All right, so I think we're uh, good to separate at this point. Yep. All right, so now uh, RCS on. Bill will uh, reorient to retrograde. And this is partly to uh, protect him from any particulate matter that might be floating around. We've got that huge heat shield, which is much better protection than having all any sort of uh, space debris hit the parachute. So we'll go with that. Okay, now how far are we from the Arctic? Quite a ways. We did a mountain uh, EVA, so there's no point doing that one again. Uh, let's see if we're over mountains. No, it's still highlands as usual. Okay, so yeah, let's get the Arctic, huh? And maybe we should try and uh, land him at the Arctic too. The, I mean, we don't want to have to go go polar again uh, when we can get that particular uh, soil sample on this run. If we can, I don't know. It, uh, it's tough to see whether we're over the... 
Arctic proper, this, the clouds, the clouds are sort of, uh, let's see, if we touch down here, will we be over the Arctic? Let us first try and get a gravity, okay, ice caps, yeah, well, apparently we've done the ice caps before, or not a surprise, uh, but let's see VA. That does not look like he's very connected to anything. <laughs> okay, uh, above the ice caps. I guess, yeah, the crew report from here isn't any good. So we're going to have to uh, try a crew report from uh, from the high atmosphere, maybe better than this. Okay, so this is the ice caps, though I can't really see it very well. Alright, uh, there is also a tundra, isn't there? I wonder where we hit that. Actually, uh, if I could configure this, I know there's a custom info window slot for uh, what biome you're over. A little bit cheaty, I know, but uh, I don't see why we shouldn't know which biome we're over. Well, now we're over grasslands. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to... Well, I guess that's data we can transmit, huh? Yeah, just transmit that data. Ephemeral space isn't really. Okay. Well, let's see what other biomes we might. We definitely want him to orbit at least once, right? So. Okay, can we get some sort of tundra or something? Again, not really clear what we're over right now, but... Nope, covering water. One of these should be used up, right? Is there... have I got that wrong? Hmm. Looks like there's a lot more water here. Would this be tundra-ish? Maybe? Nope, highlands. Poo. Under acceleration. Hmm. Ah, there we go. Tundra. Okay. Keep data. Uh, Bill, EVA. Quickly now. Yes, keep that data. Board. Okay, I think we've got, uh, got our Tundra data and we've got our ice caps. That's really what we came here into Polar Orbit to do. Now... We don't have to worry about the rotation of the planet in order to make our landing this time. Let's... Uh, no, no. Let's see what we can do about that. Yeah, right about here will be fine. Let's get a little bit ahead here. Don't want to overshoot. Hmm. 
Hmm. I really don't want to hit grasslands. Uh, I think we'll end up on the on the Arctic. I don't think there's any way we'll overshoot like that. But you never know. Okay, so that's plan four. It uh, looks like 80, uh, 68 uh, meters per second. And I think on the on the little uh, SRBs, uh, now our retro rockets, we've got 83. It looks like. So looking good. So node in 46, 45 minutes. So using the retro rockets, using the retro rockets will save us from having to do the really long burn with the RCS. Naturally, in this case, we could have carried less RCS, but uh, that could be helpful in uh, future situations. So I'm, I wasn't willing to uh, dump that yet. Uh, oh, which way is? retrograde in this case. Every time you go around the poles it uh, reverses, right? Okay. Ooh, come on. Alright, let's just take RCS off for now. Let's go a little bit closer to our maneuver node. Let's say one minute ahead. Oh, we could get closer than this. We're using SRBs. Alright. Okay, uh, let's have RCS on to stabilize and let's hope for the best. I'm going to fire set zero. Ooh. Hmm, yes. Well, that does produce a little bit of rotation. RCS is stabilizing us. Let's... I don't like that rotation. Uh, well, fire 8. Okay. The rest I'll do with RCS, I think. Oh, if I can get this nice and stable right now. Come on. So, in a bit of a rotation the way I've got them pointed right now. Probably not a total surprise. So I did the, this one and this one, so now it's this center one that still has its feel. So I don't think using them as retro rockets is a particularly brilliant idea. Um, if it was still attached to the second stage, uh, using it as ullage motors wouldn't be a, wouldn't be bad though, because th th in that case there's more mass to uh, prevent the kind of rotation we just saw. But I think I need to adjust the way they're pointed in order to uh, make sure there isn't quite that much rotation. Okay, hopefully our re-entry is not too far off now. Let's see. Yeah, it's it's pretty much where I wanted it to be anyway. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, we're going to be touching down at night, so sorry about that, but... Yeah. We would have to go around the planet a few more times to be avoiding that. Okay, let's just point retrograde. Not too sure why we're this far off of south, but okay. Uh, 
Oh, it's because we were right over the South Pole, I guess. Okay, let's orient properly. And switch grid. Come on, physics. Uh, Kerbal Joint Reinforcement is still stabilizing physics, so I wasn't able to do anything. Okay, come on. Oh, wrong way. Okay, now the little thing where I need to make sure that we are a little bit... that we're trending upwards, that we have a slight imbalance in our center of mass so that things point upwards and I think, I, I still haven't... okay, I hate this view, come on. Uh, free camera should be fine. Yes. Now, this isn't as empty as it was in the previous mission, so that's going to... That's going to limit how much I can shift into it, but I have been using it liberally here. Oops, got two of those tanks. So, hopefully this works out. Yeah, I'm still not sure if this is the right way around. Seems logical, but not everything that has some logic to it is necessarily correct. Now, how are we coming down? Ooh, we're a little bit early, aren't we? Oh, darn. I think we might be hitting grasslands after all. Well, I somehow didn't plan this right. Oh, shoot. Alright, well, we'll see what happens. Even more incentive to get some left. We do have a little bit. Ah, uh, uh, this is the wrong way to point, okay. So we want to point this way. Strangely. Hmm. So is it? This way seems to be giving me more lift, so should I shift the mass down? Doesn't seem reasonable. I mean, you would expect that, uh, let, let's say you have particles striking the surface. It, you want them deflected down in order to uh, gain lift. So you would think that you would want this pointing up like this so that the particles would be deflected downward and thereby provide the lift. But this is showing me my uh, lift coefficient goes down when I point up like that and it goes up when I point down. But you would think that if I was pointing with the nose down that when they strike the surface they'll tend to be deflected upward. I don't know. Um, very strange. Yeah, it seems very resolute in its uh, and its determination on that point. This is interesting. What's going on there? I'm liberally using the hydrazine, by the way. There's no point for us not to. Okay, uh, I think we can time warp through this phase of the re-entry. No clue. 
that's all stuff I'm aware of, but I'm just... Well, I should read up on... Uh, on aerodynamics, really. Well, as a kid, I wanted to be an aircraft designer. So... It's not like it's uh, something I should be avoiding. <laughs> okay. We do have our up pitch angle. And the up pitch angle seems to be producing a negative lift. I don't know. It's a much smaller angle of attack though. We're not really uh, changing things too much here. So, a few questions now. First of all, what kind of g-forces will Bill experience? Second of all, will we hit the tundra or the ice caps? Oh, I don't think there's much I can do about this here now. G-forces might be an issue. We're now past 5 G's. The critical point on G-forces is 50 kilometers. Past 6 G's. Not even really using our blade of shielding at all. Past seven G's. And decreasing. She makes you wonder what all this ablative shielding is for. Seems wrong to me. I mean, it should definitely have uh, peeled off somewhat. Why was it really not that hot? Wow. Guess it's cold up here. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, let's uh, quickly F3 to take a look at what g-forces we got. 6.8. So not this little gauge is a little bit uh, deceptive. 6.8. Uh, still within very very normal parameters according to our tests. This does not look like the ice caps to me. Let's just hope it's not grass. The only place I've touched down at and gotten readings, uh, gotten, a, gotten a surface sample from uh, the grasslands. So that's the one thing I don't want. Why does this one... Why is it just this one? Let me just take that off tired of that one firing. Okay, Bill looks a little bit worried that I'm not going to bother to open his parachutes for him, but uh, he needn't worry about that. But we do have to get below 25k for me to consider it. Okay, I think uh, we're good to go. Okay, parachute's fully open. Touchdown speed looks like it'll be about 7 meters per second, which is still a bit hard, but our, our Kerbals can take it. Okay, interesting sound there. And we're on the ground. Let's see what biome we're at. Oh, I forgot to do the crew report, and uh, I guess we'll have to do a crew report here. Alright, just let go. All right, Bill. Take the surface sample. Ah, grasslands. Not even worth. All right, fine. Get back in the capsule, you. Yeah, I'll grab. Up you get. Board. Uh, at least get that crew report.
Okay, keep that data. And let's recover the vessel. Okay, uh, 39.5 science for a total of 77. And we've got EVA report, two EVA reports, gravity scan. Didn't uh, get, uh, yeah, didn't get that uh, surface sample. Oh well. All right, so uh, let's call it done. And I think uh, I think I'll call it an episode. Uh, we did. Uh, we got Bill up in the space. I guess Bob will be up next, but maybe we'll do some other things before that. So. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.